everybody and welcome to the LGBTQIA plus podcast. My name is Cade and I'm the Ashton LGBTQ plus officer. My pronouns are she, her and today we're here with Charlie. So hi, I'm Charlie and my pronouns are she, her and I identify as queer. So the Q. <laughs> so the Q, that's great. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, and today we're doing Q for queer so charlie do you want to tell me something that made you happy today that made me happy today i had like yeah i had a really long line i had an amazing sleep and i really needed it because i've been awake quite a lot well not awake but i haven't had the best sleeping pattern this week and i think i just needed a long sleep so typical student yeah i totally relate to that my <laughs> sleeping pattern this third lockdown has yeah. been pants like I really am trying to go to sleep at a reasonable time and get up at a reasonable time but it's so hard yeah yeah I'm having like so recently like my whole routine has been really chucked out because just lots of changes this new year yeah my sleeping routine has gone a bit pants like it's not really bad like student wise it's just um just changes I guess so it's yeah everything's going on but I needed this sleep and I I had my final I submitted my final assignment in last night but it was kind of yeah <laughs> for exam season so um that's all gone so that must be such a relief yeah yeah honestly yeah. oh it's so nice next term now but yeah I know it's 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 I don't feel like there's been a, a sizable gap between last term and this term I feel very much like it's just been you wake up and every day is the yeah. same and it's another university day and yeah, I uh, I think a lot of people will resonate with what you've just said. I don't yeah. think many people's patterns have been great. No. Yeah, which is not our fault, really, at the end of the day. There's yeah. only so much you can do Yeah, when life has been turned upside down. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so um, what does being queer mean to you? Well, my, being queer to me, I guess, is kind of my, the label I chose for myself, like, probably just over a year now because but but that was as I became more educated and open about being part of the LGBTIA plus community it was like something that I kind of felt comfort in as in it's a very broad term I think I've always felt comfort in being queer but it was more being open about it to everyone else because I feel like some people don't really aren't they're not very um not aware but then it's not as talked about as the other um, labels but it's just something I chose after learning more and like I think it's definitely like a very deep and personal like decision you make within yourself and that was just yeah what the one I the label I chose from everything yeah. that I related to the most and felt most comfortable using so there's a lot of power in that isn't there yeah. there's something really powerful about being able to pick a label and go this is this is what I resonate with this is what it means to me um and with the history of the word queer as well Definitely. I know a lot of people might know this some might not but obviously queer used to be a slur for yeah. the gay community yeah. um and so it has a lot of power oh, yeah. if you ask me yeah so. and I think it also because it is such a broad umbrella term I think that also is quite comfortable for me. It's not, it's very like a loose fitting, but also very me at the end of the day. Like I I think it's just easy and I think it just is, comf- yeah, comforting for me just to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm queer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and then also like the best part about that is there's no, you don't have to really give any kind of, you're not putting yourself yeah. in a box or yeah. or anything. Queer is great because of the flexibility it has, I guess. Yeah, and like I, I'm definitely one of those people. Whereas if I'm around, if I'm in a situation, say at work, I may be with a group of people who are heterosexual, and they don't really interact with the queer community at all. I would probably just say, "Oh, I'm a lesbian," because mm. it's just um, something that I think. Say, if I don't really want to explain it, I just say that because that's probably what they would understand more if that makes sense so I feel like yeah. then identifying as queer it it kind of it allow, well it allows you to say whatever you want really like you're Absolutely. not boxing yourself and just is but then I do think if you're explaining to a group of maybe straight people they wouldn't understand straight off the bat if you're like oh I'm queer they'd probably question it more and that's something I 
kind of don't always feel comfortable, especially in like a work situation. So I would, again, it, but then that's just me personally. I'd just be like, oh, well, I'm a lesbian. I like girl. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. It's it's so frustrating that the, the word you feel most comfortable with is not the word you could always use in all contexts. Yeah, definitely. Like that's something that I think is it's interesting and it's food for thought because if you're a straight person listening to this and like somebody introduces themselves to you and it's a word you don't understand, yeah. I think it, it it's important just to instead of just being like, well, what is that? Yeah, you know, yeah, or, or like accept it. Yeah, or they'll be. Or it'll be more of like, they understand what that word means, but they don't understand that it could also apply as a label. So yeah. I guess, but I guess in a situation, if I was in a situation like that, I would explain and I would educate. But sometimes just to be quick and <laughs> if I'm feeling it's tiring. Like it's tiring. Imagine if you had to explain your identity to someone every time you spoke yeah. to a new person. It would be too much. I totally understand why you do it. Yeah. Yeah. but so yeah so if I was so obviously queer is the main label I use but if I were to be asked by someone not in a community I probably would identify as a lesbian just to just to so that they make understand it make it a bit easier for them and also that reflects like how these labels are not yeah, they're yeah. not permanent and yeah, that is the beauty fluid, of it yeah yeah absolutely the whole it's a whole spectrum, isn't it? And mm-hmm. there's it, just because you identify as one thing doesn't mean you're stuck there. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't move from there and there's no shame in doing that. And it's a process, isn't it? It's a learning curve. Yeah. And what you've described sounds like you identify as something and then you got educated and you realised there was a word out there to describe how you felt. Yeah. And then you're able to take that on board. And it's there's no there's no shame in that. No, definitely. And I think yeah. I don't think I've met many other queer people so I guess it's definitely been an independent thing for me as well just to come become comfortable with on my own I haven't had the I think obviously of with Covid I haven't had the fortune of going out and meeting more people in the community which is actually I think one of your other questions Paige about like pride going to pride I've never been to a pride You've never been? No, I've never been. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because oh, do you want to talk more about that? Or? Yeah, yeah. So back in 2019, I think, um, so I was 18, and I was I was going to come to London Pride, but I was working, so it was just one of those things. And I was like, yeah. at that time, I was like, I was knew, knew I was going to uni. I knew there'd be 101 other prides I'd get to go to. Yeah. There. Still, <laughs> Oh, and then obviously I came to uni and everyone's talking about how notorious pride is and it's mm-hmm. part of it. I'd say every queer person's well every person in the community always talks about pride and how it's a massive celebration and yeah unfortunately little miss Rona oh <laughs> your day will come your day will come yeah. it's interesting actually I don't think as many people have been to pride as you would imagine I think yeah. sometimes you think oh well you identify as some form I have some shade of gay you must have been to pride but it's not always the case is it yeah um, and it's not always accessible either which yeah. I think that's why I kind of my question is like you know if you haven't been why but obviously you just got you just got really unfortunate with Rona yeah. I got unfortunate with Rona. and then I think previous to that I was I was quite closeted but that was because I was a lot younger yeah. so I just wasn't as comfortable with going but yeah which is totally understandable um yeah. I don't think I went to one when I went to university I think a lot of people actually go to university and that year is their first prize mm. um it's definitely my first one so I understand that and I'm hoping one day you'll get to go me too, <laughs> me too. one day my day will come if um, things had gone differently this year, I would have had everybody within the community actually try and try and walk in the parade. It's yeah. meant to happen. It does happen. Yeah. It has happened in previous years, um, but yeah. I don't. I, think, I don't think it'll happen this one. I think yeah, it was supposed to happen last year as well. Yeah, yeah, but I think so sad. I'm sure we'll make up for lost time. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Absolutely, we are young. We've got time. We have time. That's so. True. I suppose we talked about this a little bit, but like, what experience have you had as a queer person that you wish more people knew about? I think, like, personally, I've become really comfortable with the idea of being queer, like using the label, the queer label. I just feel like it is my word, if that makes sense. 
Mm-hmm. And I feel like people within a community sometimes don't educate themselves enough about all the different labels because they think, oh, I'm quite comfortable, I'm not really sure, but I'm really happy with my identity, I guess. And, yeah, so I feel like that's why I want people to do. But I think what I struggled with definitely last year uh, when I, like, first came to uni was, um, like, stereotyping. Mm. Like, and I don't really wish that on other people because I think stereotypes can really harm people because like in my experience they they really did kind of harm me like oh like one time I got told I had a bisexual haircut Uh okay (laughs) yeah and it like so was that as like a retractor had you told this person look I'm queer and they were like no you've got a bisexual haircut yeah yeah what a strange flex yeah um I think and then but it wasn't just that like that was just one experience but I've also I hear it I used to well obviously when I could go outside and interact with people I used Mm. to hear within the community quite a lot like oh you've got these shoes on you dress a certain way you look this you look that and I think that's what like really frustrated me and then from that I kind of built and grow like grew off that until Mm. a point where I was like well, I'm queer and I'm happy to be queer and you can't put me in a box of being something else. So, Well, thank you for yeah. saying that. I'm yeah. being so brave to say that. I, it's a real shame, isn't it? But it's true because this question could lean itself to like what I wish a straight person knew. But realistically, the community isn't perfect. And sometimes yeah. people who identify with different communities within the community aren't always respectful of each other, are they? And yeah. I mean, you've just shown that, which is... It's sad, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. I think we're a community all, like, centred around love for all, respect for all, and encouraging others to be more comfortable and banding together almost in Mm -hmm. solidarity. And then you do get... But you do get a lot of, like, stereotyping and just things that could be potentially really harmful to someone who is like discovering themselves and whatnot absolutely but absolutely yeah but so yeah I'm very comfortable with my label now but in the past I wasn't and I think yeah stereotyping did hurt back then and it is it's a really complicated process to try and work out for yourself so if you have other people in the community who are voicing their opinions unwarranted and (laughs) suggesting them one thing than another it can be really confusing when you're just like so young and, and just yeah. learning and growing. <laughs> yeah. But I also I also do believe in like guidance from others. Like I wouldn't be like, oh leave me alone kind of thing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I do understand that they're not doing it. People wouldn't stereotype out of being and have the intention of mm. confusing or upsetting someone. So I get that. But I just think people just need to be a bit more aware yeah a bit more aware and a bit more conscious of what they're saying I guess yeah mindful of their words just mindful of how you treat and speak to other people really definitely yeah oh that's nice yeah so if you and it can't be COVID if you could change (laughs) anything in the world right now and it cannot be COVID what would it be what would I change like oh Oh, the, the, like like for me or for the world or for it can be <laughs> however you want it can be as selfish as you want or it can be some really like uh, altruistic thing I don't mind either way I probably would I'd, okay I'll go really broad and I would go to like probably destigmatize homosexuality I'd, I'd go right in the roots of society I would want homosexuality to be as normal as heterosexuality because I feel like imagine how different the world would be I mean probably more personally for me per se but like just imagine the potential of it like have you seen the film Love, Simon? I have. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a there's like a little right line in that when they're like oh I wish um um heterosexual people had to come out as being straight to their parents mm. and I think I remember being like oh that context like oh can you imagine 
so yeah I feel like I'd want to destigmatize being gay and just have it as a normal it's just not a big deal exactly. in your ideal world this podcast wouldn't even need to exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah like <laughs> you could just there'd be no need for it it'd be like me introducing a straight person be like well how tough's your day been like... <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about you yeah <laughs> oh oh I like that I like that so now yeah. just out of curiosity if you could change anything and it was so selfish so what would selfish. it be um Oh god. For me personally. Um, For you personally. Oh my god. Um I, I don't know, I've been far on the spot. There's so like things that I'd want. Things I want. This is it, isn't it? There's always something. I, I'm trying to think of an answer to it myself and honestly I don't have one. Well obviously I have the first like few things like well first of all, like I would want to get out probably get out of my um tenancy agreement with my rent oh, place I'm not living at <laughs> that is a good one. Oh my gosh I'm not in my place I'm renting either so I totally understand that yeah, yeah. sign at the uh, petition kids um yeah. the student union is a good I'll place go, to rep yeah, this petition in my Instagram bio now just <laughs> yeah, I just call it it's in uh, Ashton student union's yeah. bio I believe probably the president's bios as well yeah uh, yeah because that would um, save me a bit of money and oh, <laughs> um but yeah um yeah. I can't really think of anything no that's a good one rent I think I'd do that one as well <laughs> the money that would be in my pocket on my days yeah that would be so good mm-hmm. <laughs> So we've actually we've talked a little bit about stereotyping already and I'm hoping this can be in a light context but we can we can you can address that as you like but what is the biggest stereotype of being a queer person that you live up to that you that I live up to uh, that you live up to and I think that's really hard because I don't know many queer yeah. stereotypes because me queer is like incredibly broad it means anything yeah. and everything yeah I feel like and so I don't even know oh, go on I feel like so say say I was like just meeting a random new person and they were like oh how do you identify and I was like oh I'm queer then they'd probably be like oh you're so you're laid back. <laughs> yeah. Such a broad umbrella term. They'd probably be like, "Well, you you just don't really, really you're just the labels that much. So you just wanna, just wanna, you're just queer. Like that, that's what it is. And I am quite laid back about it now, definitely. Wow, I think, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I never. Well, because I went into this thinking, well, I've got no. I well, I probably do have preconceptions that are buried deep in my brain, but obviously at the forefront I have no like really big stereotypes yeah. of being queer so maybe that maybe that's one to watch out for yeah <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I can really think of no absolutely mm-hmm. it was a hard one I think for you mm-hmm. to answer but yeah. and so what is like your just your favorite part of being queer I think it is just being like it is just so broad but at the same time time I feel like it is very tailored towards me and how I feel about my sexuality like I feel with some of the other labels they do have those stereotypes and I don't really like the how the stereotypes get well they kind of define in some people's minds they define the, the label yeah and I don't I don't really feel very comfortable with those so yeah oh I've forgotten I've forgotten question (laughs) no it's all right I just said like what is your what is the best part what is your favorite part about being queer yeah so I think it is just that being free and just honestly just being so like oh yeah I'm I'm queer that's that's you need to know laid back (laughs) really chilled oh I love that Mm. that's really lovely um, so, and I know that you, I know that you know Nancy, so obviously you know a lot about the uh, LGBTQ plus community at Aston. Yeah. Um, but what is like your favourite thing about being part of that community? Being part, well, I think being part of the Aston community was my first, like, obviously getting to know quite an intimate, like, because it's not the biggest society, but it's obviously not small but it was I think obviously just people are friendly and they get to know one another and it, it's a friendship group rather than a society group I think I feel 
and I think Aston will always be close to me because it was the first like group of um queer people that I got to know that I got to yeah and just interact with because I think being queer and coming to university so I came I came out at uni because I wasn't comfortable back in sixth form to really tell anyone so and I was like the only I was the only queer person I knew back then yeah coming to a university new opportunities new people and just meeting such a lovely like group of people not big but big enough kind of deal yeah yeah so that's so it's just very comforting I guess yeah it's a group of friends for you I guess yeah that's so nice it's so nice that the university has been able to provide that safe space I think like I've never been on committee but within my role I'm in I'm always really comforted to hear people say I really like the community we have and I feel it's welcoming because I mean that's a sign if we're doing something right isn't it so definitely and I think yeah we're all just friends at the end of the day there's so yeah it's never really much conflict well I haven't experienced any like yeah no and again there's conflict in every yeah every walk of life isn't there but I'd have to agree the people who I've interacted with through Aston LGBT over the past four years it is now have always been so nice Mm -hmm. and so friendly and so welcoming um and you always have like the generations like I know when I first started who people who were there had been at uni for four years and they felt like they were the like they knew everything and they were like the kings and queens of the socks and like and then obviously and now it's on the flip side and I'm the oldest of the group and I've got these little babies coming through and it it feels like my job to nurture them and be like you're you're gonna be fine it's gonna be great (laughs) (laughs) you're gonna have so much fun (laughs) yeah yeah and hopefully next year it will be a bit more fun hopefully are you on placement next year yeah I should be well I'm aiming to be aiming to well good luck if not I was gonna be like oh you know you should uh join the society or you could be the next officer for no, the uh, student union it's very scary scary <laughs> times oh bless you yeah oh well, yeah we'll see I, well, I do i do aim to get a placement if not i'll be around, probably staying in birmingham just be around the corner from the society <laughs> perfect there you go then you can ship it mm-hmm. charlie is there anything else you wanted to add anything i haven't asked about that you just felt like you wanted to Tell the universe about being queer. About being queer. Um, I think another... So I think I did touch on it. So as I was saying, like, the stereotypes, like, of the... of all, Well, all the labels, the other labels, was definitely something that kind of discouraged me from thinking, like, oh, I don't want to... I think that was... So say... I think... So when I first realised I was queer, like, part of the LGBT, I obviously... I thought I was like bisexual and then I moved on and realized oh I'm not actually bisexual I'm more queer but I think the preconceptions of bisexuality and even like when you think about like the preconceptions of being a lesbian I think and the stereotypes that go along with it was just something that didn't speak to me like I, yeah there was just something about it I was like this is isn't me this isn't who I want to be and I think as I was saying like at the beginning hence why I found comfort in using um queer as my label because it was just something that there was no stress about it like mm-hmm. you didn't have to live up to not even live up but it's just live up to the label as it were yeah you take on a lot of history and a lot of a lot of baggage when you take on a label because they're powerful there's a powerful words there's a reason they exist and I can understand why if that didn't fit you yeah why would you want to take on the baggage that comes with it exactly yeah and and it's even like interacting with people and then quest obviously I don't want to be centered around what other people think of me but it definitely did sway my opinion when thinking and then obviously I found that queer was a label and it was like yeah it's it, yeah it is an umbrella term for some people but f- for me as well that's just 
what I feel and it's all deeply personal like you can't absolutely you can't yeah box people in a label and that's why I think one you know one of those people that like you labels only describe so much like you can't just like everyone's the same oh you're this you're that Mm -hmm. and I think people do stress on labels sometimes and I think that's why again all all coming back to that I just find comfort in using such a broad term because it is Yeah. yeah But yeah, that's yeah, I really like that. I really do. And it's true. There is uh, people do. I suppose there's two sides of the coin, isn't there? They they find a label that fits them and they grab onto it for dear life because they finally found something that rings true for their story. But mm-hmm. at the same time, sometimes it can have negative implications. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure we all dream of a world where yeah, this is it not even. A, yeah. It just it it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It has no. There's no reason for it. Like we said, no reason to this for this podcast to exist, you know. <laughs> but, but yeah. Because I do, at the very end of it, it's like, I do think it's a spectrum. And how do you label a spectrum of things? Like, you could group it, but it's never, like, definite, if that makes sense. Absolutely. No, I think you're absolutely right. I think that's something that's important to drive home as well, isn't it? Because yeah. we very quickly make judgments based on the labels we hear yeah. and sometimes that's helpful but a lot of the time you have to remember that people are more nuanced yeah. than that and it's not black and white yeah and it can cause harm to people who are probably on their own journey of mm. discovering what they are and what they are who they are <laughs> and <they're laughs> on a table <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and I think yeah so but I think definitely I think kindness is something that is free and it should be like considered definitely when you are talking about such a sensitive topic as um, like homosexuality and everything. But yeah, oh, I just really hope my ideal world of like <laughs> homosexuality yeah. being a normal thing. Yeah, well, we're getting there. That's that's kind of what we're working towards, isn't it? That's the dream. <laughs> yeah oh that's so nice that's so nice and I feel like you've you've raised a good point there kindness is it's really it's key Mm. so I think some people think this is a little bit overwhelming there's a lot going on and there are labels I don't understand and terminology I don't get but if you practice kindness and respect you're never going to put a foot wrong yeah definitely because even if you don't get something quite right you know if you're kind and you're respectful about it that other person will just correct you and you'll go oh I'm so sorry and you'll you'll get on with your day you know exactly and it's not yeah it's just working with that person what they're comfortable with so yeah yeah comfort I really like that you've used that word and I think it's really nice it's that's you know this this label gives this person comfort it gives you comfort it makes you feel safe and and, and, yeah yeah and good and that's every human being should feel that way yeah would say though that i uh, you messaged me about it but a few weeks ago Paige that queer I don't think queer has a flag no <laughs> no because there's queer can sometimes mean uh people use it in like a gender fluid term yeah. um and that, that does have a flag mm-hmm. but yeah I was having a look and I went because we're, we're using flags for um the different uh graphics mm-hmm. and I got to queer and I went well it's so subjective that I thought the right thing to do is to message you and just say well what what represents you the best yeah because there's no point me putting a flag on it because it's not it's not me it's not my story it's not my decision so that's why I thought well I'll just I'll ask <laughs> yeah but yeah I don't maybe I should do that one day I'll become a flag designer not me oh yeah <laughs> yes. make it your own like special personal one and then maybe people can take it on or like they can take your design and add their own unique oh, like yeah, they spin can, to it they can customize it <laughs> yeah there's a that's there, see this is history in the making people yeah. it's history month history in the making the queer flag yeah. where will it go from here yeah gonna round back to this podcast <laughs> yeah. oh yeah very that was very podcast host of me it was very like oh yes it's history it's month and we're talking about queer people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody should be paying me for this honestly <laughs> honestly i i agree i think <laughs> i think this these podcasts sound so fun especially like with lockdown definitely going to be mm-hmm. listening to all of them 
as they oh i'm so looking forward to people enjoying them yeah. so far it was just my face on the video so hello viewer i'm sorry for that but <laughs> you know i i put my lipstick on i got dressed nice i apologize the background isn't very gay because i'm in my like room at home but what else can you do you know it's fine i'm, I'm sure the content of the podcast is <laughs> is well people do things when they listen to podcasts as well so yeah. Just put it on in the background, don't you, and go about your day. Someone's out there like vacuuming. Hello, person's vacuuming. <laughs> we'll just yeah. Oh well, I mean, thank you so much for coming here and to well coming here. It's all it's all online for talking to me today. That's thank you for having me. Honestly, I am. This is the, one of the most well, probably the most exciting. I am going for a walk in a bit, but oh, crazy. <laughs> the most exciting thing by far that I've done today. Oh well, I'm so glad that you were uh, you enjoyed yourself. That's that's really yeah, important. And I got to talk about myself for like yeah the whole interview. Well, podcast. and I love that. And I hope I hope that I did I did think like I do hope if someone were listening to this and they're not 100 percent sure about themselves that this would give them my take on being a queer queer person. I'm not, I'm not too in my own horn I'm just like I no you toot know. that horn yeah toot it louder <laughs> as I said like I haven't met I don't know if I have met anyone that would has been like oh yeah I'm just queer or I'm queer so I hope yeah I hope this is just so someone else can use this or I can make more queer friends you know oh that would be nice Charlie do you want to like shout out your Instagram yes so my Instagram is um charlotte.claudia um Plain and simple, not Charlie, but Charlotte's my full name. So, I want to a <laughs> bit more. So, if you want more queer friends or just good plant content, because it's great that the, Charlie is a plant mum. So, um, oh, if you want any yeah. of that, I'm yes, I'm. <laughs> Well, I've honestly been to parties and stuff and people have been like Charlie can you come and look at this plant quickly yeah. <laughs> and I'm like of course <laughs> like, show me <laughs> that is the best I think um bid for people to follow your Instagram I've ever heard to be honest yeah I do love plants but that's, that's <laughs> Yeah. so if you're a queer person who loves plants you know who to uh to follow yeah. when it comes to speak to you and obviously if you want to dm me as well you're more than welcome to i'm happy to always have a conversation with anybody um especially in these times where i can't actually see anyone <laughs> cute so yeah thank you so much thank you Paige. thank you all oh. I love it. I know. I, hope I know. I love it too. I, it brings me, I'm a little bit nervous every time, but as soon as I start recording, I'm just joy, constant joy. It's like endorphins just pumping around my head. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.